So nobos are northbounders that start in usually usually start in Springer, but you do have nobos that start at Harpers Ferry, and uh, sobos or southbounders that most of the time start at uh, Katahdin, Maine, and come south. heading for day two of making food for hikers aka trail magic on the Appalachian Trail and we have an hour drive ahead of us and then what? We are gonna make pancakes. That's right we're making pancakes. And, and fruit. And fruit. fruit yep and we told the hikers that we would have food ready by 9 a.m. That's an hour drive. It's like really important to me to have the food rocking by nine. Is it cold outside? It's kind of cold outside, not as cold as yesterday. <clears throat> because when you're a hiker and your job is to hike and you wake up in the morning and it's cold, you do not want to be sitting around waiting for anything, even if it's good food. So it's really important that we kind of stick to our word on this. So we're trying to get there. I think we're gonna make it. Man, it's so hard. Seven, I don't D is something. Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> I've followed you for I don't know how long, man. For how long? And then all of a sudden you showed up on the uh, on the AT video and I'm like, man, they're even doing that. And it's like, wow, so cool. <laughs> so cool. I mean, I would never thought. It's like, who's these guys? I seen the camera. And I didn't even recognize you, you know? <laughs> and then I seen Fresh Ground and then he said, oh, that's the Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> It's 8.30. All right, we got uh, sausage and coffee water on the fire. We got Fresh Ground building his own stove over here, which I'm pretty excited about. And look at this, most importantly for the hikers, we got hot eggs and pancakes, and it is 8.45. Good job, Rainier. Good job. We did it. We made it on time. And we got a hungry hiker. been cooking breakfast for about 30 to 40 minutes now. It feels pretty good. We've been feeding people non-stop. We feel more on top of things today than yesterday. We kind of know our setup better. We know the terrain here. I'm pretty proud of my kids. They're just basically took over breakfast. I'm just there to help. It's pretty awesome. I'm doing hot chocolate. Yes, you are. One of the things we're gonna do today is I really wanted you guys to be able to hear from some of the hikers because this is like one of our favorite groups of people and communities. I was just thinking, it's the only place I can go and grab a piece of fruit out of the fruit bowl without using any uh, tongs and not feel bad at all. So I'm gonna be asking them some questions. We're starting off with, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Diesel. Oh, you know what? The light's right there. And you're a photographer, so you know we need to move. So my name is Diesel. I am an AT3 hiker attempter. Yeah, so I'm doing the trail because obviously I love being outside. And um, I think one of the main things why, what really brought me to the AT is the people. Um, obviously like the, the views are great. The trees are great, but um, the kind of people you meet out here really just make you feel like welcome and like it's so corny and cliche to say, but you do feel like you have a family and people look out for you out here. Um, so it's, you know, what you guys are doing out here is really much appreciated. You guys took me in last night and um, yeah, just it's 
you won't get this anywhere else. So it's uh, it's really special, really special place to be. And I'm really thankful for what the trail has provided for me so far. Hi, I'm bedpan. I'm a nurse who quit my job to come hike the trail. So I turned 40, so I decided to have a midlife crisis. It's going great. All right, my name's Fargo. Uh, I'm out here, you know, besides just living and being free, what better way to see America than on foot, you know? Not only uh, America, but just the best little towns around here. It's awesome. And that's why I'm out here. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm uh, Mike. My trail name's Mulligan uh, from Jacksonville, North Carolina. I started the hike last year, uh, couldn't finish, so I decided to start over this year. And uh, the trail's awesome because it's just, honestly, the best of America. Uh, you meet the best people out here, so that's why I'm doing it. It's long legs on the trail here, just hiking the AT for a new experience and to get away from Michigan winter. Hi, I'm Alex. Sweat Sickles is my trail name. I grew up in the outdoors with scouts and became an Eagle Scout eventually, and that's why I chose to do the Appalachian Trail. Hey, I'm trail name Ninja, and I'm uh, out here to give myself some time and space to change myself. And the trail do that. Okay, we got a shuttle here with some hikers leaving and some hikers coming. Okay, we just had a veteran through hiker stumble across here. Can you just tell us your name and what you did? Okay, my name is, my trail name was Walkabout and I hiked in 03, 2003 and it's kind of a uh, notorious year because I, I've always been told that it was the wettest year on the uh, Appalachian Trail. We had rain for months on end every day. Our, our gear never dried out. I started on April 1st in 2003 and I always said it was the most foolish thing I ever did because it was April Fool's Day and I ended on 9-11 which was uh, uh, significant of course but it was 9-11-03. Uh, yeah. So looking back, right? I mean it was wet, miserable, right. but now that you look back do you is it happy memories, like sad well, memories. Well, What's any, like anything that's significant in life is a struggle. I mean, you know, I don't care if you go through graduate school or you hike the Appalachian Trail. Easy things aren't memorable. So, uh, in in terms of my life, I'm turning 70 soon. I would say uh, hiking the AT as a through hike was probably one of the most significant things I ever did. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Well, anything thank else you, you want to say? No, that's fine. <laughs> Birthday. So we took. Yeah. Like two and a half days. So you set up, and you're setting up mainly for them, and then it's whoever else exactly. trickles in is fine. Just like I did with y'all. You remember how I did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, one of the really cool things that's happening is I asked Fresh Ground to share with us what he's learned from five years of feeding hikers. Because for me, showing up to this trail for three days i had this goal like i was like oh i don't want to miss one hiker and i noticed like just mentally and emotionally and physically i started to crash and he said that he crashed a lot the first two years because he never took care of himself and there's so many people with so many needs perceived needs out here that it feels like you could just sacrifice yourself just because there's always a need even yesterday my mind started shutting down around 3 p.m and he said that he never took days off in the beginning and he started taking one day off and then he started taking two days off a week and it's really cool because he's been doing this for five years uh feeding hikers and, you know we're out here for two or three days so we're just doing a little sprint but i still feel like there's so much to learn yeah that's good that's healthy i'm, I'm saying just let it happen we have a lull here in hikers it's just us and we're roasting coffee on the fire Eating yogurt. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> Look at and I'm putting sprinkles <laughs> in it. Yeah, I see that. A chicken farmer walked out on his farm one day. He stopped by the chicken coop as he went on his way. You've heard that version of it. When all at once rotten egg hit him in the eye, the thing you dreaded, those ghost chickens in the sky. So the 100 mile wilderness is something Hikers have certain goals, but one of the end goals is the 100 mile wilderness, which starts at Monson, Maine, and goes all the way to Abal Bridge. And then you're only like eight miles from Baxter, and then you just climb Katahdin. So, so that's a story about 
two nobos that are going into the 100 mile wilderness and shortly coming in they meet a sobo and the sobo says hey y'all guess what it's a hard climb up ahead but after a day or two it levels out and it's easy hiking up to Katahdin and they thanked him and they kind of uh, went on their way and uh, it was a man and a woman and she looked at him and said why didn't you tell him about what's up ahead and he said uh, I, I didn't have the heart to tell him and uh, he goes, why didn't, you, why didn't you tell him? She goes, well, all I want to do is take a bite out of his arm. And uh, in a way, that's what, that's what it boils down to with through hikers is you're hungry, but you're also humbled by what it took for you to, for the, to complete the journey. Because so much has to come in to play for you to finish. And the hunger is definitely something you have to put up with. And I really can't say where the story came from, whether I read it or heard it. But to me, that's what through hiking is all about. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yeah. I've always thought of that story as a through, true, what do you say, a microcosm yeah, of yeah. a through hiker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you're asking how to eat this. Yeah. <laughs> you just dip it, like that. Dip it, and roll it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? So good, we don't have these in England, so this is pretty good. Is that that's your first time ever eating a corn dog? First time ever, yeah. Wow. I've been dreaming about this for days. <laughs> Alright, we're serving lunch here now. We got a new crowd, hey. new face, and I went to Honey Papa House. Yeah? It's got sweet corn in it. I didn't know that that was the reason why it was called a corn dog. <laughs> and then you said it was so bizarre and tasty? Yeah, it's good. It, 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 it adds to the flavor. <laughs> so I was up at the last shelter, and I come down the hill, and I'm just thinking, oh, this could just be any regular trail magic. And all of a sudden, I saw the Crawford family. I I'm like, I cannot believe this is it. This is unbelievable. I was not thinking about coming down. I'm so glad I did. <laughs> it was just two That's tenths awesome. of a mile after all. Yeah. <laughs> With no well, backpack. Hey. Well, we're glad you guys I are here. I do appreciate it. You guys are great. Thank you very much. I'm Jean. Jean? Needles. Needles? Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, I watched every single one when I heard about you. And yeah. I told I told yeah, yeah. my niece, I said, hey, yeah. you could be the next Crawford. She's like, what do you mean? I said, watch the one that hour documentary, work. right? I, like they're, I they're said, look, they're your kid is like here. five. We're you wouldn't need to carry him. I would tomorrow, never have done that. I would never have done that. But yeah, you guys are incredible. I didn't say this today yet, I know I talked about it in yesterday's vlog, but this fire pit right here uh, was sent to us by a company named Solo Stoves. They sent it completely for free. They're not paying us or they didn't ask us to say anything, but we just told them we would use it on the trail and show it in our video. And this is what we've been hanging around all day and what we're cooking. S'mores on, it's what we cook the corn dogs on. It's kind of cool because it basically creates like no smoke. It's it's actually been really cool for us, so we're really thankful. Thank you, Solo Stoves, for hooking us up, and everyone's really appreciated it. And I don't I never had, I don't know what a s'more is. <laughs> <laughs> Your life's about to be we are doing s'more lessons now. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Toby. Toby has never had a s'more before. Whoa. Oh, Toby, your s'mores on fire. Oh. <laughs> you do what? You put it there, Sorry, I'll take that. and then sandwich it, and now you pull the marshmallow off the stick. Man, nah, that looks good. Yeah. This is a marshmallow occasion. All right. This is, you're going to remember this forever. <laughs> Let's see this. Watch it, he says, this sucks. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Gotcha. We're going in the Okay, two more, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why they're called s'more? No. Hey, memory. Because you're gonna what? want some more. Huh? <laughs> 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 Dude, he actually didn't know. <laughs> the one person. <laughs>
just wrapping up dinner here, but we've been trying to film hikers today, and Yvonne here, she was telling a bit of her story. I was like, you guys have got to hear this. So my story, well, I first heard about the Appalachian Trail about 10 years ago, I suppose, and I've been wanting to do it ever since, and it's been building and building, and so last year I lost about 70 pounds in weight, got myself fit, went to the gym, and uh, now here I am. Now you're here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So what made you decide this year? This is the year. It was my friend actually. Um, I'd been talking about it for a long time and I won't swear but she said either do the trail or stop talking about it. <laughs> so <laughs> and you did, you're doing it. So I said alright and I'll do it. <laughs> and here you are. Here I am, yeah. Uh, how many days are you out? How, when did you I start? started on Tuesday so this is my ninth day. What's the hardest part been so far? Um, the rain. Not, 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 not the walking. I don't mind the cold, I don't mind the walking. It's harder than I thought it was going to be, but it's the, it's the rain. It's being wet and setting up your tent in the wet. And, uh, Where are you from? Uh, Devon in the southwest of England. Okay. Yeah. So if there's someone who's sitting at home and they're saying, I can't do it, someday I'll do it, what would you say to them? Start doing it now. Don't leave it. Definitely. All right, I got to give you another. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you, you very much. Anything and thank else? you for your inspiration for uh, helping me make my decision to come. How was that? Watching your watching your videos last year and okay. oh, watching you, you do it. Yeah, I watched every single one. <laughs> and uh, thinking, well, if a family can do it, I can do it as well. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? No, that's All it. Right. Thank you very well, much. Thank you for Let's sharing. <laughs> they say that hiker talk at the end of the night at the trail, hikers talk about three things. Food, trail gear, trail gossip, but it always comes back to food. <laughs> We are back at the cabin overlooking the beautiful lake over there. You guys see that? But we are more interested in the crazy bread. Hey, Nada. Guess what? We um, picked up two of the hikers right. that we fed at the same park that we got picked up by Arnie One Mile. Really? Yeah, it was two of the guys that we fed. They kept saying, oh, best timing ever, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys picked up hitchhikers? That's awesome. Okay, we're telling stories, but we're gonna go. We're going out again tomorrow. It's been a long day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And? We are having ice cream and pizza. Oh, that's right. Is there ice cream tonight? Thanks for reminding me. Butter, garlic, flavor. A little bit left in there. Okay, that's kind of intense. All, uh, all right, I'm trying some too. I mean, they kept saying, oh man, this is amazing. We can't believe the timing of this. We're like, it's going to happen a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of, it kind of grows on you. <laughs>